up your foam roller. Okay, your foam roller this morning. Mobility overhaul 89 is overhead mobility, and all I mean by overhead mobility is the, the muscle the muscle groups responsible for letting you get your arms nice and straight above your head, okay, while keeping your shoulders pulled together and down. Okay, so keeping that shoulder girdle nice and stable. A lot of people, there's some problem somewhere which we'll be tackling this morning, I'm sure that's responsible for not letting that happen, okay? So when we do try to lock something out above our head, we either start to shrug, our shoulder blades either get pulled apart, or we start to bend the elbow, okay? Or multiple, multiple of those things. So that's what this morning's about, and it ties in nicely with yesterday's kettlebell class, because now we're starting to do a lot of things where we're holding the kettlebell over our head. And if we don't have that stability and mobility in this area, you're going to end up making the movement a lot harder because your elbow will be bent, which means that your triceps and your shoulders are working a lot harder. And or you're going to increase your chance of injury, okay? Because there's other muscle groups going to be holding that together and you're going to be putting a lot of stress and strain on them. So, this is very important. I would almost put it up there as important as ankle mobility, which you always hear me half run about. So the first thing we're going to do, um, I'll hammer it home to you now. It's your choice to be productive this morning. You can lie in this foam roller and just go, oh, this feels nice. Or you can get stuck into the problems, feel a bit of pain and discomfort, get through it, okay? And the more you put in, the more you get out. It does not apply anymore than it does now, okay? So I'm giving you two minutes to do this. It's important that you don't just lie there. You're trying to find, okay? You're trying to find any problem areas. And by problem areas, I mean areas of high pain, okay? You're trying to find them and you're trying to address it. Don't make it overly complicated, as we go through I'll explain the techniques etc that you can do and try but ultimately it's a matter of you've found a pressure spot, there's a bit of high pain all you're trying to do is get that muscle tissue between the foam roller and your bone and just try to grind it into a pop to free it up a little bit and get it moving the way it's meant to be moving okay that's all we're trying to do but we can throw in different techniques to try and aid that and assist it so my main point is you've got two minutes on this first movement make sure you make the most of it don't just fart about you know, making it feel nice. Look, look for areas of high pain. So all we're doing here is a familiar one. I don't want you to go any lower than the rib cage, okay? So i.e. don't go onto your lower back where if you picture your skeleton, you've got that exposed area of spine. We do not want to go in there, okay? We want to keep it on the rib cage. But to start with, get yourself lying on it. And all I want you to do, and this is what is better if you don't have a hood on, is just start with a foam roller where you'd put the bar if you were doing back squats, which is basically the bottom of your neck, okay, the bottom of your neck. And all I want you to do then is bridge up, and then I want you to get your arms nice and straight and put them over your head, just like you would do if you were doing an overhead press. So I want you to try and get these arms nice and straight and locked out. And then all I'm doing is I'm just going to start, this is where we better take my hood off, is just start working my way down my back. Now remember, okay, your back's probably a lot wider than the foam roller, so therefore you need to roll onto your side a wee bit. Don't forget the tissues out towards the wings. Now this is just a general overhaul, okay? So this is us getting the whole kind of target area of your upper back and traps and shoulders targeted. Not the most effective way, because we're going to get stuck into each individual area soon, but this is us just getting in, finding problem areas, okay? And like I say, you don't need to copy me. I'm going to be starting now moving around to where I feel my problem areas, okay? So if I'm getting a problem area a bit further out to the side, I'm going to have to shift my position onto the foam roller, okay? And I'm going to get in there. Now, I've pinned an area of high pain. Move your arm about by all means, okay? If you've got that area of high pain to try and get stuck into it further, you're trying to make it more effective, okay? Now, when we're in this position, everyone, so keep going, don't stop. When we're in this position, it's important that you don't overextend the lower back, okay? So it's important we don't let the lower back start to creep upwards towards our belly button, if that makes sense, okay? So we don't want that curve in our lower back, but we can absolutely keep a nice tight core and get a nice overextension of the thoracic spine, which is your upper back. So you can get that upper back spine and curve it around the curvature of your foam roller to increase the pressure, but you can see I've got my hand on my stomach and my hand on my lower back just to make sure that I'm still keeping that core nice and tight, okay? And I'm starting to move off short, I better reset myself, okay? So it's a general overhaul. The reason why I tell you to get it up with your arms over your head is because it's going to expose any areas of high pain or any problem areas that might be responsible for holding back, for holding back your overhead press movement, okay? To get that nice straight arm. But we're staying on the upper back. We're getting stuck into it, and don't forget, we're not just rolling up and down, we're getting side to side. 
We're working against the grain of that tissue. Remember, you've only got a few minutes, so make the most of it. Yes, the neck will get tired because your head is suspended, but you can support it with your hand by all means. We're not on here for long. It's not meant to be relaxing. Remember, we're not here for a chill time. So I told you to get the spine into overextension and create your upper back. You can also bring it into flexion. When we start almost trying to do a crunch, okay, you can just support the back of the neck as you do that, and that might just help expose things a little bit more. Okay, and as always, with each movement we do today, some people might find this hell enough, okay? It might be absolutely brutal, lots of horrible tissue. Other people might feel it pretty chilled, okay? It just feels nice. There's not a lot of problem areas. Now, the foam roller doesn't quite get stuck in deep to the muscle tissue the way the ball does, but rest assured, we will be getting stuck in, in the ball pretty soon. Good. Right, that's your two minutes up, everybody. So, boom. That's a good one to do before a warm-up, okay? If we're getting attacking all that tissue, and that's when I would say that's a good effective movement. It's hitting the whole target area. It's not getting stuck in the same depth as the ball will, but we're gonna get stuck into the ball. But that's a good one to add maybe to a warm-up, or just in general, if you're feeling things a bit tight up there, and you're just after a quick two minute, get the foam roller out, and that's how we do it. We can go into overextension, but we're trying to keep the lower back nice and tight, so we don't want that lower back going into overextension, okay? But we can get that upper back wrapped around the foam roller, or we can curve it round and get into all those muscle tissues, okay? Happy with that, everybody. Right, take a sip there. I'm absolutely boiling. I don't know why I wore this blinking hoodie. Give it a second. Costume change. Right, we're back. So we'll put that to one side, okay? And now we're gonna get stuck into the same area, but we're gonna break it down, okay? So I want you to take the ball out now. This is where the fun really begins. So we're gonna work on the upper traps, okay? So it's important that you listen in to me now and get to know where we're going. So we're gonna do what we call a trap scrub. Again, familiar for some. The upper trap, see this area here, which I would call maybe, you know, the whole classic massage in the shoulders area, in here, that's what I'm going for. So I want you to get the ball and get onto that meaty part of the upper back. You're not venturing down into the scapula, okay? We're not going into the shoulder blades, are we clear? Because that's going to be another area we're working on today. So we're going to be getting into the upper traps, and it's as simple as, you get the ball, you lie on the ball, and then you go, okay? <laughs> that's all you need to do. And this is where it's off of feel. So all I'm going to be doing now is just pushing down into the ball. Now what you'll definitely have to do, because we are pretty high up on the shoulders, okay? The whole muscle tissue area, you'll feel it. It's a big soft muscle tissue area, area of muscle tissue, should I say. As soon as you get the ball in there, you're just looking, okay? You're not looking for a specific point. That's what I'm telling you now to get over making it complicated, okay? We're putting it at the top of the shoulders, okay? Just off to the side of the neck, just off to the side of the spine. And there's muscle tissue there, so we're going to smash it. So all I'm going to do is just try my best to pin that shoulder down into the floor, get weight down into that ball, okay, and I'm going to start scrubbing, okay, and what do I mean by scrubbing, okay, I'm seeing some faces on that's maybe not been on in a while, okay, so scrubbing, all we're doing is just pinning that area where it feels a bit tender, so let's say you find an area of potential high pain, scrubbing is just us rocking side to side, up and down on the ball, okay, so imagine it's someone's elbow in there, grinding up that muscle tissue as if you're going for a kind of deep massage, while we're on here, remember, move the arm around. See if you can get into it more. But you can see, or maybe you can't, I'm doing almost a kind of semi-glute bridge. It's going to let me get more weight onto this shoulder. We're trying to get as much force into the ball as I possibly can. And then I would tell you to start your scrubbing. You're trying, this is where it is literally a matter of everybody. Get in the brain in as much pain as you can tell, tolerate, okay? It's not nice. And for a lot of us, this whole area is going to be knotted down and matted down pretty significantly. And if it is, then you need to get stuck into it. Remember, we're quite high up. You can go all the way out to the shoulder joint, and you can come all the way into just the side of the spine, right to the base of the neck. So you've got a decent area to work with, but don't venture down onto the shoulder blades. You'll find a lot of pain. For most of us, you'll find a lot of pain on the shoulder blades. I want to stay away from there just now. So don't be tempted to venture down. Find that area of high pain. Remember, we're on the upper traps, the upper trapezius muscles. They run the top of your neck, sorry, the top of your shoulder girdle, base of your neck, 
and I'm just looking for an area of high pain, which I've found. I've been on it a wee while now. So what am I doing? My techniques, I'll remind you, okay? Biggest one is force, pressure. That's the biggest one. You find that area of high pain, you try to get as much pressure and force onto that ball as you can. Once you feel you're getting a good significant amount of force and pressure, then begin your scrubbing, okay? But we're trying to keep the muscle tissue relaxed, okay? And your face as best you can. But this is what I mean by being proactive. We're not just lying on the ball there thinking, oh, that feels good, okay? No, we're getting stuck into it, as much pressure and force as you can, and we're trying to break that problem area up, okay? You've got an area of tied down muscle tissue, we're trying to restore that nice, supple. Oh, so if it's that bad, try and grin and bear it. If it's important that you stay relaxed, okay? It can be as painful as you like, but that muscle tissue that you're smashing needs to be relaxed. If you're all tensed up and tight, it's counterproductive. Last 20 seconds, so this is what I would tell you. Just go for it. Just go for it. So all I'm doing, as always, I'm giving you the general area. We're all different. So you just get the foam roller or the ball in that area and you're looking for your own issues, okay? You might find there's lots and you might find there's not lots. You might find this area's okay, but I guarantee for most of us, you've probably found a decent bit of tension and knotted up muscle tissue. Relax there, we're going to change sides. How are we doing on live? Okay, feedback as always. Are you getting that? Are you finding problem areas? Are you finding a lot of problems? Tied up tissue, pain, you don't need to say yes, we're all different. Again, if you need a reminder, this is where we're going for. We're going to switch sides now. It's this area here, if you can see. Okay, I'm going from the base of the neck. This is my upper trapezius, okay? It goes from here, base of the neck, out, spanning out to the shoulder. So I'm up on top here, okay? And then I'm running down, down to the top of the shoulder blades. This whole area, basically, that I can get my hand on, that you can see now, that's the area that I'm trying to scrub, okay? So it's not a big area. But it's a dense and powerful area. You'll find that there's plenty of muscle tissue in there. So it's just a matter of other side now. Lie in the ball. It's as simple as that. Just lie in the ball and have a quick big scrub, okay? Have a big scrub. Straight away, right, okay, oh, there's a nasty bit, there's a nasty bit, and there's another nasty bit, right? So I'm going to get on the worst of the nasty bits and start there. First of all, what do they say? Right, pressure. So I've found an area of high pain. I'm going to get on the worst part. The source, the bit that feels the worst when I push on the ball, that's the bit I want you pushing on. And then it's a matter of trying to get as much weight on there. You can assist that by glute bridging up. <sighs> okay, and again, we're all different. Some of these are going to find a lot of tension up here. A lot of people hold a lot of stress and tension up here. You know, they tell them, relax your shoulders. And they didn't even realise how tense and how high up everything was getting held. So you'll probably find in here quite a few painful spots and that's where I would tell you get the weight on it pin it to the floor and then when you feel you've got a decent bit of weight on it start your scrubbing walking side to side walking up and down you're staying on that problem area as you scrub change your arm position around see if you can put it above your head does that make it more effective you put it across to the other side of your hip does that open it up a bit more okay or out to the side you play around with the position of your arm because it depends where exactly you are it might just open that area up a bit more. Again, if you want to move the ball to a different area, use your hand rather than rolling around all over the place. You'll end up at the other side of your living room. So you're pushing down hard onto this ball. You're scrubbing the hell out of the problem areas that you're finding. You're being proactive. We're not on here all day, but if two minutes, two minutes is all it takes if you're proactive and you're doing it effectively. If it really is that bad, then that's your good incentive to get it done. Not the incentive to not do it. So use all the different techniques in any order. But ultimately, just try and imagine all you're doing is breaking up that mo mortar, what? Breaking up that muscle tissue with your mortar and pesto, okay? Just grinding it. That's what the ball is. Grinding the hell out of it and get it done. Not nice by all means, but yes. We know it's doing us some good, don't we? Good. Right, start finishing up there. So again this morning, it relates to our overhead. 
range of movement this one okay so it relates to this being able to press up over your head keep the shoulder blades pulled down and together and keep the shoulder girdle stable but also with that just by addressing that plane of movement if there's tightness which there will be in these areas such as the chest the shoulders the upper back the lats in here if there's tightness there that's going to affect your posture okay so you're going to find some of us are naturally just starting to like when we relax we, we, we find our round shoulders we've almost got a hunch okay and that's because we're tightened up here so we find it hard to pull those shoulder blades back we're weakened the upper back muscles so we need to do a bit of work okay so not only is this benefiting your overhead so some people are like oh, i don't really care about overhead mobility um, but it's going to affect your posture as well by doing all this and getting rid of all that tightness it's going to give you an easier time holding yourself together right okay we're going to get into the next part which is the same area but further down just like i said we'll get into the scapula the shoulder blades okay this is where you're probably going to need your sit bag right so we're working just below now what we're going to do is we're working down the ribs down the rib cage we're starting pretty much where i'm showing you now basically just below the area we're working on and we're going to be working right down along the the shoulder blades okay down into as far as you want to go down to the bottom of the rib cage okay so again picture a skeleton you've got the rib cage running down and then you've got that hollow cavity where we've just got the exposed lower back the lumbar spine we never really want to be down there okay so i want you to get yourself on to the top work your way into the shoulder blades okay and it's pretty obvious because you're going to end up feeling the bone you're going to feel the bone when you're in there and all i want you to do is just get imagine you've got your shoulder blade okay we're running the ball down the back running down the curvature of our shoulder blade i want you to imagine that you're trying to get in behind the shoulder blade and push into the shoulder blade with that muscle tissue okay which you will be able to but before you all lie down because i know when you lie down you'll not be able to see me have a quick look because this is very very effective way to get into the the scapula right so i'm lying on my ball it's going to take you a wee bit of wiggling about to find the top of the shoulder blades there i am bang okay so i'm going to start scrubbing the hell out of it doing it real quick i find the problem area oh that's not nice okay so i'm going to push down hard you get your arm nice and straight shoulder blade pulled together from here if i bring my arm across back and up while i'm pinning that area high pain continue that as you go down so as you start to venture down into all the problem areas within your shoulder blades straight arm and that is how we smash and floss okay because you're going to start moving that shoulder blade around you're going to open up that shoulder blade to let the ball in and it's going to let you get into the tissue much more effectively it's a nasty one for a lot of us okay we've got a lot of muscle attachment points in at the scapula and that's why you tend to find there's a lot of high pain okay we've got a lot of knotted up tissue in there so let's address it okay i'm going to give you two minutes now to work from the top of your shoulder blade okay top of your shoulder blade don't know why the whole trousers this morning it's roasting in here don't mean roasting <laughs> right i'm on the ball okay so remember you don't want to be rolling the spine but you're pretty close to it as you start to move down you're going to feel the scapula you're going to feel that bone okay and you'll feel the muscle tissue within it you're trying to work down the curvature but as always don't over complicate it I've given you the area that we're working on. Go search, go hunt for some pain. <sighs> and I'm pretty sure most of you won't have to go too far before you find it. And this is where it, oh, it's almost like toothache. It's like toothache in your back when you start getting stuck into this area. It's not nice. <sighs> but it should be nice. That's the problem and that's the end goal. So if you're feeling a lot of pain, remember the first port of call is just pushing down into that ball. And it's not enough to lie on the ball okay beginners if the tissue's that bad and you're just new to it you've only just started getting stuck into it okay as a beginner you're not going to be able to get much weight on there it's going to feel like hell but if we're a bit more of a mobility veteran it's not enough just to lie on it i want you to try and push yourself down into it okay so you're getting even more weight on it and that's what i've said before about even getting a weight plate or a kettlebell and putting it on your chest safely of course to get more weight pushing down into the ball if that's what you need so i've found that area high pain i've pinned it i've got a decent bit of weight on it now the muscle tissue is relaxed but it's not comfortable by any means it feels like hell i've got that arm nice and straight okay and see when i'm telling you to move the arm it's not a matter of you have to rush that sequence okay if you move the arm over your head and suddenly you feel like you're getting into it like you've never got into it before keep the arm over the head and smash it in that position so each time you move that arm 
Oh, why? Each time you move that arm, try and scrub it each bit you move to. So you get it done. Work your way down through the shoulder blades, but if there's a particular area of high pain, remember for two minutes that we'll be on it, it's better to stay on that area of high pain and try and fix that first big area of high pain that you're encountering than trying to do the whole area in the two minute gap. Experiment with your breathing as well. See when you're on an area of high pain and you're pinning it down, take a big, big breath in, but not from the chest, from the diaphragm. So see when you're taking a big breath in, try and inflate your stomach, make yourself fat. Inflate your stomach, okay? When you do that, you're going to massively increase the pressure that you're pushing into this ball with. Because we're expanding the rib cage, that diaphragm's contracting. Take a big breath in, scrub it, okay? You're going to find it's hellish, but don't hold your breath too long because remember, we're trying to stay relaxed and I don't want you passing it on me, okay? So don't hold your breath too long. But take a big breath in, feel the difference. Does that make it better? Yes? Use that technique. No, don't bother. Remember, when you're putting this arm, moving this arm, try to keep the elbow locked out, try to keep the arm nice and straight. So yep, hopefully you're getting something from it. If it's feeling bad, good. <laughs> Because goodness will come. Goodness can only come from it. Right, okay, how are we feeling? How are we getting on with that? We're doing okay? Yeah. <laughs> look at the faces. You look, dis <laughs> you look disgusted. Good. Right, okay, so remember, the purpose of this, it's almost like a, oh, I don't know. Here we go. It's like a tour. It's like a tour of your body. In the sense that your overhead mobility might be lacking from a key area that we're working on this morning. It doesn't mean to say that the whole, if your overhead mobility is not great, you don't have to do the whole class every day for the rest of your life, okay? Great if you do, good for you if you do, okay? But the point in this is, you might start, I, well, you won't, you might, you, there's no might, you will be able to identify your own problem areas, the ones that are really significant to you as we work through them this morning, the ones that you really find are painful, and when I say, right, that's us up, you think, I need a lot more time on that one. Make a mental note of it, okay? And like I say, make that area. So let's say you're feeling a lot of tension and pain in your scapula that we've just done there. Okay, yes, we've got other side to do. Then bookmark that in your head. Think, right, tonight I'm going to do the same two minutes. I'm going to do another two minutes working on just a wee bit lower down. Two minutes each side, okay? And then that's that done. And the next night, do another two minutes on each side. And over the space of a week, you'll find a big improvement in that area, okay? There might be multiple areas, okay? You might be probably will find, especially when we get into this anterior compartment here. We've got a lot of pain and tightness here. That's going to stop you from being able to sit up nice and tall, nice and proud, okay? Stop me being able to press up overhead because things are cooling here, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's change sides. So my point is, you want to make your overhead mobility better. That's why you're here this morning. If you've got time, to do this class every day, then that's great, okay? But let's be realistic here. Most of us don't. So the purpose of it is give you a kind of guided tour of all the muscle groups and all the potential problem areas, and you're going to identify your own, okay? So for me, this is hellish. This is hellish, but to be fair, this is always hellish, this area that we're doing right now. I don't think I've ever laid on this ball and it's felt nice on the upper back. But we push our bodies hard, so like I say, it's an ongoing battle. One that you'll probably never win, but we still fight it anyway. And we keep fighting it because it keeps us moving better, it keeps us feeling better, and it keeps us a lot less injury-free. So I'm on to that side. And get the other side, sorry. Same detail, okay? I'm looking for an area of high pain. Don't have to venture too far and I find one. I just want to wiggle around on the ball to make sure I'm on the worst possible, the source, the ground zero of where that pain's coming from. Once I'm on it, I'm going to start by simply pushing down hard onto that ball. Then when I feel I'm getting a decent bit of weight on that ball, I can start my little scrubs side to side, up and down, just trying to grind that muscle tissue between the ribcage and the ball to try and break up that knotted up tissue. 
But to be fair, for most of us, you'll find that we're very similar in the sense that I can pretty much guarantee that everybody's got a bit of tightness in their lats. So when we get on this foam roller shortly and lie on our side, yes, that one, possibly the worst, possibly the worst foam rollers movement we can do. You think this is bad? Wait until we get the lats. That's usually the one that makes people feel ill. So I guarantee most people have got a bit of tightness there. We've got a bit of tightness in the front, in at the chest and shoulder. Plenty of notes. And the upper back as well. So get stuck in everybody. Remember, don't let your mind wander. This isn't what this is for. This isn't escape. You have to be conscious about what you're doing. And you have to think to yourself, right, scrub, move the arm. Because it's so easy end up lying on that ball for two minutes and you haven't even done anything. <sighs> so if you're like me in two minutes I'm really getting all the way down, okay? I'm kind of getting onto my first area of high pain. Maybe starting to venture down a wee bit further. So don't sweat it if you're not getting the whole area done. Remember, two minutes each side, we're not really going to get that. That's why we break it down and you do another two minutes in your own time if this feels like an area that needs work for you. Good work everybody. Right. <sighs> Start thinking about finishing up there. Again, the beauty is if you are watching it on recorded, you can just hit the pause button and spend a bit longer on there. Stand up everybody, okay? Walk around, catch your breath, get a sip of water, let the blood flow around, okay? Because again, for a lot of us, this is pretty damn uncomfortable. Okay, we're going to get into the lats. There's a titimus dorsi, these big upper back muscles, okay? Now, they're exposed. See if you put your arms straight above your head. This here, okay? Feeding into your shoulder, into the side here, this area that you can grab. Yep, that muscle tissue there, that's, that's where lats. We feed around to our back, but we're exposed here. Now, a lot of us, a lot of us, that's one of the main culprits from what I've had from experience. That's one of the main culprits that restrict people from getting that arm straight up because if you, you can test it to, well, you don't need to test it. You can see the effects of if there is tightness there simply by bending your arm at 90 degrees, grab a hold of that area, as in get a good grab, squeeze the hell out of it, then try and straighten your arm, okay? You feel that restriction from because you've grabbed that area. That's basically what's happening, okay, when the muscle tissue is tight, okay? We're not gonna be able to get that arm up. So what happens? We can't straighten our arm anymore, so we start to shrug the shoulder, or we just end up putting the arm out to the front like this, okay, to some degree. So again, let's go for it. So this morning is all mobility work. There's not going to be any stretching. Stretching comes at a different time, but more than anything, if there's there's no point stretching, okay, if the muscle tissue's all knotted up and it's not gliding freely. So this takes, pardon me, this takes priority. Oh, I got up this morning, the nice breakfast and everything before the class this morning, and I'm not doing it again because I'm regretting it. I'm feeling boot. <laughs> right, let's go for it. We ready for it? Let's do it. Okay, so I'm lying on my foam roller as you can see right now. I've got my arm straight again. I'm trying to get my arm nice and straight. Why? Because it exposes the area more. You're going to get more weight on it. But again, we're trying to mobilize ourselves in the position we're trying to attack. So I'm starting in at the armpit. And all I want you to do is just start rolling side to side. 
and we're going to work our way down, okay? Now, most of us are going to find that you don't even have to roll down too far before you start to find pain. So, we're keeping that arm nice and straight, or as straight as you can, and you are going forward onto the armpit, okay? And then, we're going back as far as you can, okay? So, you might need to move again. I'm going to feel like the foam roll. So I've given you an idea, I've showed you, I've shown you where we're going, okay? So we're all different and I'm seeing pain faces starting already, which is a good sign because it means you're in the right area. This area for most of us, there's no pain like it, okay? Especially when you get right down to the bottom of that armpit and you really start getting into the lats, it's disgusting, it's horrendous, but remember it shouldn't be, okay? It shouldn't be. How are we doing on live? We get in that area. Do you feel the area that we're after? Is anybody struggling with it? And I can quite easily, happily explain it again, what we're going for. K kinda? Yes? No? No? Right, okay. So, again, look, if you're not happy, this is what I'm doing when I'm lying down. So imagine I'm lying down. All I'm doing is getting on the foam roller, as I would be showing you now, putting it here, and all I'm doing is going side to side, working my way down, okay, working my way down here, basically down the side. Starting where you'd put, if you were putting roll on deodorant on, okay? Basically starting at the top of your armpit, okay? <laughs> where, where, where the top of the roll on goes, this is terrible. So that's where you're going, and you're working your way down, right down into the rib cage. But for most of us, if you can see me now, you're probably going to find it here, there, this area here. That's where you're probably going to find most of the pain and discomfort, okay? So again, it's a matter of you're trying to attack the side. But get it on your armpit and just roll back and forwards, trying to crush the muscle, crush, crush the muscle tissue, and then roll down a bit further. And again, for most of us, oh, James is the word. <laughs> You're gonna get the pain. You're gonna get the pain and discomfort. Okay, for most of us, for most of us. But we're trying to keep this arm as straight as you can. And this is where I'll tell you now. It's so hard to roll onto that area of high pain that you may well be feeling and stay relaxed. So you see what I mean? It's hard to stay relaxed while you're smashing it. So that's why you'll find that you don't put all your weight into it. And that's fine. But try to put more and more weight into it as you continue to smash that area. We're all different, remember. Okay, some of us are going to feel this hellish. Others, not so much. But pretty confident most of us, most of us are going to feel it pretty damn tight. So it is your upper back muscles, okay? So you are going to be rolling onto your back to some degree, as you can see I'm doing now. Scrub it, smash it, get it done everybody. Remember it's not meant to be nice. Don't take a breather, you've only got two minutes. So get stuck into it and get it done. Good work. Scrub it side to side, up and down. Oh my word. <laughs> Get into it. Okay, you know that area that feels hellish that you're trying to avoid? Yep, get on it. There we go. So that's what I'm saying now. If that's feeling like a real problem area for you, which for most of us I can see it is, make it part of your day. Okay, right, let's think about changing sides. But when I say think about changing sides, you don't have to change sides. Okay, if you want to spend a wee bit longer on it, by all means, but I'm not waiting for you, is the point, because I can't. But if you're really feeling you want to spend a bit more time on there, by all means, please do so. Right, so, next side. How was that? Okay, most people getting that. Pretty horrible, eh? Pretty horrible. But remember, if that really is knotted up so bad, you're really going to struggle, okay? You're really going to struggle to get that arm straight above your head. If things aren't moving freely there, it's going to jam up your ability to get that arm nice and straight above your head. And for most of us, it is, like I say, a real problem area. How do you stretch that out? The best, like I say, see the best, the single most, you can attack, everything that we're doing this morning can be attacked simply by hanging off of something, okay? So a dead hang. If you can hang off a bar, 
a tree, okay, anything safe, okay, check it's going to support you first, don't be hanging off a blooming twig, but check, don't check, hang off a bar, okay, it's good to have, get a pull-up bar, put it on your door frame, it looks good, you can put some tinsel around it at Christmas time, get on it, okay, so what I'm saying is, anytime you're out walking the dog and you walk by a swing park, don't care what people think about you, okay, don't go, I really could do with hanging off of that, there's people around who probably think I'm a weirdo, Accept the fact that you probably are a weirdo. It's good to be a weirdo, okay? It makes you different. The day you stop caring about what other people think is the day you start living your life, everybody. Most of those people will look at you going, what's that weirdo doing? Oh my God, they'll know, right? Get the kids in the car. <laughs> but what's happening in reality, you are benefiting from it. You are getting better overhead mobility. So back to a serious note. Hanging off of something is the best way to do it and you'll feel it. See, when you are hanging, some people will go, oh, I don't have the strength to hang there for a minute. You don't have to hang there for a minute with your feet off the floor, okay? If you can hang from something that you're able to put your feet on a box, a bench, or even on the floor, you can take the weight off your feet as much as you can handle. So you don't need to have your feet off the floor. If you can only hang there for five seconds, it's obviously no point. So put your feet on the floor or on a bench or something and just slowly begin taking the weight off your feet until you reach that point and you're like, right, I'm getting a good hang, a good stretch here. And I can hang here for a minute. And when you're hanging, imagine that your shoulder, shoulders are being pulled out of the sockets, okay? Because if you do that, you're going to help relax because you find when you hang initially, you'll fight it a little bit. There'll be tension, which there should be if you were doing a pull-up. There'll be tension in your, your back. There'll be tension in your shoulder blades. So you need to consciously think about getting pulled from that bar, so try it next time you're able to. That's how we attack it, we're getting the whole upper body stretched out from hanging off of something. Of course there are other movements, you can break it down, we obviously do upper body flexibility classes, there's plenty of them there as well, we recall it, so you can load them up. But if you're looking for a single way to stretch the entire Everything that we're doing this morning to, to get the flexibility and just hang off of something, okay? I'll, I'll leave it to that. I'm going to have to stop talking now because you can tell. So please just get stuck into it. Try not to wince, try not to... Try not to do the area just off to the side of the area, you know, you really don't want to go on because it feels hellish. Get on that area that feels hellish. If it means easing off the weight a little bit on the foam roller, by all means do so, okay? But then try to get the weight back into it. Oh my God. <laughs> so that says, in my opinion, for me anyway, the worst, the most painful foam roller movement we can do. But many of us, I'm sure, well, I can see it in your faces. I'm not going to lie, it makes me quite happy. <laughs> I'm only joking. Just to know I'm not alone. At least you don't get recorded, though, eh? I've got your record myself lying here. Like a week 12, with a big stupid pain face on, talking nonsense. Right, okay. Have we had enough of that now? I'm sure you have. Right, stand yourself up, shake out. Test and adjust, okay? I should have said that earlier. Every time we're doing mobility, every time you do a different movement, test and adjust. Test it. How does things feel now that you've done that? Does it feel like all of a sudden, well, that's gliding a wee bit better. And I should have said it before, when we're doing our overhead mobility, you should be able to keep good form, good posture, keep your shoulder blades pulled together and down, like I'm constantly telling you in the warm-ups. Arms should be by the side, okay? You should be able to keep your shoulder girdle stable and down as you press up, 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 up with your biceps and your arm in line with your ear, okay? So it's important you get that bit right because a lot of us don't realise it, but if there is tightness there, we start to go here. We're out in front now, okay? So we think we're getting the arms up straight. We are, but they're not where they need to be, okay? So again, that tends to be from here. If there's a lot of tightness here, you'll struggle to get them straight above your head and in line with, okay, your ears. Does that make sense? Right, okay. So test and adjust. Why? Because you might just have done the one that think, right, that was, that didn't feel like it done much, and then you've just tested and suddenly things feel like they're gliding really well. So then that would be the one that I need to work on. Okay, so keep doing that. I should have said that when I started it. Right, what we're going to get into now, let me think about it. 
Right, we're going to get into the first rip. We're doing this one. In fact, no, we'll do the first rip last because we're going to have to move the camera and everything around. We're going to move into the front rib, so we're getting there. We're going to move into the chest and the shoulder area, okay? We call this the anterior compartment. Or at least that's what I'm calling it. <laughs> Just go with it. We're going to get stuck into here. Now, this is where I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you where to go. And <laughs> I'm going to tell you where to go as well, too. I'm going to tell you where to go. And it's your choice between what you use here, okay? You'll find that the foam roller's good because it's a lot higher up than the ball. So you can kind of get into it a bit more. It'll make sense in a minute. But you'll find this thing gets deeper into the tissue. So you have to use what works for you. Experiment with both, okay? Now all we're doing here is I'll come a bit closer. And I want you to use, use your hand to feel the area that we're after. So you've got the shoulder, okay? You've got the shoulder muscles here. Push the fingers into here, okay? You're gonna feel where the shoulder starts to, sorry, where the chest starts to feed in to the shoulder joint, okay? You'll feel it, feeling that whole kind of area here. It's almost like a cavity, almost, if you get my point. So if you're on the shoulder, your fingers don't really disappear, but if we're in that area, they kind of sink in a little bit. That's the area what they're after here, okay? So we can get the ball in there, and all we're, we're gonna be lying on it. We're gonna be lying on the front. So we're getting onto that area, and when the ball's in there, or even when the foam rolls in there, just imagine you're making a snow angel, okay? So we're doing that whole thing with the arm. Just imagine you're doing that. That's how we can smash and floss it. Scrub the hell out of it, but that's the area that I'm after, okay? You're gonna find a lot of tension, a lot of tied up tissue in here. You're not necessarily, you probably will, should I say. Certainly for me there is. Try not to venture too far onto the chest, okay? We're not really working the chest itself if you want to, and it feels like there's a lot of work needing done on your actual chest muscles, by all means do it. You'll feel pain definitely probably on the shoulder itself, okay, on the actual shoulder muscle, but I want you to try and get stuck into that cavity there. Does that make sense? So when you lie on the ball, you'll just feel the ball just wedge in there. You'll know exactly where you need to go. Maybe not so much when you're on the foam roller, but again, if you're lying on the foam roller, you're gonna to have to lie on the foam roller like this with the foam roller at 45 degrees as opposed to that. But when you lie on it, you'll feel it. You'll feel that that just slots in there, okay? So that's what we're after, everybody. Play around with both, see what works for you. I would maybe say start with the foam roller actually, start with the foam roller, see how it feels. If you feel like you're, a good, you're getting a good effective bit of work done on the tissue there, foam roller's quite good. So use the foam roller first and then use the ball secondary. So all I'm doing, as you can see, like I can say, you're gonna have to move that foam roller roughly 45 degrees, lie on it in the front, okay, and then just simply, Give it a wee roll, just to get to know the area that you're in. We don't want to be on the shoulder, we don't want to be on the chest, we want to be in to that nice little bit that we're showing you, okay? And you almost need to, well you don't almost need to, you push down into this one, okay? It's not enough just to lie there, I want you to really push down. Now, if you find there's a lot of tied up tissue, remember, first and foremost, pressure. Okay, you don't need to scrub, you don't need to do anything, you just need to try and get as much weight on that area as you can. Once you feel you're getting it on, you can simply start sliding up and down on it, okay? Move the shoulder around. Feel where there's tightness specific to you. And that's where it becomes a matter of, is the foam roller better or is the ball better, okay? You might find, depending on where it is, the foam roller gets into it better. So I've pinned it down. I can feel there's a lot of work needing done in here. It's feeling pretty tight, so I can start. I can start my snow angels, okay, to help smash the tissue further. See when you're doing your snow angels, if you can see me now, it doesn't matter if you can, but see if you bring your arm all the way around onto your lower back as if you were getting restrained, if you like. That's going to help open up the area more as well. So you might find by getting in that position with the arm on your lower back, okay, the back, back of the palm, back of the hand, back of the palm, back of the hand and your lower back, you might find it opens it up more, but please play around with that snow angel position I was telling you about with the arm. Don't rush it, just go nice and slow. And this is where now it's really up to you. Use the ball, use the foam roller. You can quickly switch what feels better. The ball is always is going to get in there a lot more, but the problem with the ball is, depending on where it is, you might not quite get it the same. But when you are using the ball, everybody, like I've switched to now, you're going to have to really push down into it, okay? You're going to have to really push down to get that ball up into that area. So 
the four ball is good for attacking the whole area. It's good for giving the whole area a quick overhaul. The ball lets us get into all the nooks and crannies. So play around with both everybody. Get to see what works for you. And remember you're trying to just get yourself in the best position you can to attack these tissues. And the problem is again, well, it depends on the size of the ball you've got. If you just get a kind of generic massage ball like I've got, you'll find that you can do your snow angel, but when you start to get your arm higher up, you lift off the, the, the eh, sorry, you lift off the ball to get that arm up, okay? So that's for the, the the foam rollers a wee bit better in that sense. But certainly with the ball, I'm feeling like I'm getting in there a hell of a lot more than I did with the foam roller. So they both have their place. If you bought one of those little kind of mobility packs where you get multiple balls, you may have a spiky one that's a bit bigger. That's the one that would tell you now's the time to bring that bad boy out. If you've got one of those bigger ones with the kind of spikes on it, like the ones that you look like you put in your tumble dryer. Or is that just me? <laughs> like the spiky ones, you know the ones I'm talking about? You might get one. If you've got one and you're wondering when to use it, this would be a good time. So if you've got a slightly larger one, How are we getting on there on live? We're feeling that, you're working that area. Like a torture, torture chamber of the day. Right, we're gonna change sides. We're gonna change sides. Now again, ball, foam roller, it's completely up to you what you use, but use a bit of both. If you've never done if you've never done this before, use both. See what works for you. Or if you're quite happy with it and you want to get stuck in the ball, do that also. It's yours. Only you know what's working best for you. And what works best for you doesn't necessarily work best for others. So I like the foam roller first because it's quite high. It lets me really get a lot of force into that area. But then I like the ball because the ball gets deeper, gets right into the nooks and crannies of where that pain is coming from. So a wee bit of both for me today. Right, so we're on this anterior compartment. Chest, shoulder. If you're finding a lot of pain in here, which for most of us there will, there'll be a lot of tension, a lot of tied up tissue. Remember what I was saying about bad posture, bad form. If you sit slouched, this area becomes shortened. The muscle tissues become shortened. No, they become relaxed. Sorry, they become relaxed in that shortened state. So we're round shoulders. If you think about it now, if you pulled your shoulder forward, the muscles in the chest and shoulder become short. Okay, you pull your shoulder blades back together, the muscles in your chest and shoulders become lengthened. So if you're sitting slouching for a period of time, those muscles are shortened and you're relaxed. So those muscles end up relaxing in that shortened state. So when you try and pull your shoulder blades back, it's now tension, it's now hard for them to do that. They're now stretching them out. So then just like an elastic band, they ping back to default into that slouch rounded position. It's not enough to stretch. If the tissue itself is knotted up and tied up tight, all the stretching in the world isn't going to help if we're not doing the mobility work alongside it. So don't forget your snow angels or just simply moving that arm about just scrubbing the hell out of it, okay? Just scrub the hell out of it. Right. Right, we're going to sacrifice the first rib. Not literally, don't want you, don't rip it out. Well, we're going to sacrifice the first rib movement, which is that one, where you jam the ball in, squeeze it into the door frame, okay, and do this sort of stuff. If you're happy with it, you can do it. If you're not happy with it, don't worry, we'll pick it up next time. But we've done the main culprits, the main problem it is for most people. So we're going to sacrifice that so we can get a couple of stretches done. First one, simple. Stretching out the area that we've just done. We'll get the arm out to the side. Before you roll, before you get ahead of yourself, pay attention. When I start to roll, or before I start to roll, pull your shoulder blade together and down. Just like I'm always telling, just like you would do when you're standing up. 
shoulder blade pulled together and down. Don't have your shoulder rounded, okay? Because if your shoulder's rounded, you're defeating the purpose of the stretch and you're not going to get the best stretch. So imagine you're stood up nice and tall, nice and proud, shoulder blades pulled together, start rolling towards the hand. Go slow so that you can keep that shoulder blade pulled together. And by keeping the shoulder blade pulled together, you'll feel that stretch quicker. Okay, I want you to keep the palm flat on the floor and all I'm doing is rolling in. You're rolling your body into the best position you possibly can in as relaxed a manner as you can. The other arm, put it on the floor like a stabiliser and push into it. It's going to let you get more weight onto it. Your legs, just twist your body around as if you're trying to roll into that arm. Now for everybody, for everybody, this is a chest, shoulder and bicep stretch. So if you're feeling it in the biceps considerably, that's fine. Okay, if your biceps are tight, you're going to feel it in your bicep. We should, hopefully, be feeling it in that area that we've just smashed with the foam roller and the ball. Okay, that anterior compartment, which I was telling you about. That's the target area here. Okay, that's where we should be feeling the stretch, and that's why we have to keep the shoulder blades pulled together, and you have to keep yourself tall and proud in this position. But, like I said, if your biceps are pretty damn tight, you may be feeling it more in your biceps than anything else, which is fine, because we're stretching them out while we're at it. So just like any stretch, we're not holding it, we're taking it further and further and further and further and we're never easing out. Don't ease out until the end. So it's been a pretty brutal, for most people, mobility class this morning. But remember, it shouldn't be. And that's not me getting on my high horse, you can clearly see that it's brutal for me too. Right, ease out and change arms. So if it's that bad, and you know your overhead mobility needs work, extract. Extract what you need to from today and throw it into your day. Remember what I said. There's more chance of you doing it if you throw it in to your day rather than making it your day. So don't tell yourself tonight you're going to do an hour's mobility if you've told yourself that every night so far and you've never done it. Keep the ball to hand, keep the foam roller to hand any time you've got spare time. And you do have spare time because there'll be a moment where you find yourself sitting there going, oh, farting about, your mind will wander. Mine certainly does. And if your little ball's sitting there, grab it and do whatever you need to do while you remember what you're trying to do. If that makes any sense. You catch my point. Throw it into your day. Concurrent activity. Okay, there's a lot of things we can do while we do our mobility work. You can do your feet while you're on the phone. If you're on the phone, stand on the ball. Smash the bottom of your feet out. Okay. If you're sat watching the TV, you can get stuck into multiple areas. You can even lie on the floor and watch TV and do a lot of the stuff we've been doing this morning. Okay, so try to include it as part of your day if you're less likely to set actual time aside. Because a lot of us are, me especially, it's very easy to say, right, I'm going to do my mobility work tonight, then tonight comes around. And something else happens. Good. Right, ease out of that one, everybody. Okay, so this is what I would tell you. Hanging's the best thing. I've told you that already. Hang off of something. If you've got the ability to hang off of something, now do it. If you don't, another way you can substitute it without going out of your way is every time you go out of a room, get your hands up off the door frame, leg, legs, not legs, arms nice and straight, elbows locked, and just lean into it. And if you can't reach your door frame before I hear that excuse, get your arm on either side of your door frame. Okay? And do the same thing. Push through. And what that will do is that will stretch out your lats. Okay? Now, yes, we've got the stretch that we can do with lats on when we're doing this. But like I say, throughout your day, how many times do you walk through a door frame? Okay? That's how we start to introduce it more to your day rather than, you know, it's more effort to get down on the floor and do this. Okay? So every time you walk through a door frame, a good stretch out, it doesn't have to be all day. Try and incorporate it into your day if that's a problem area for you. Or simply hang off with something. Hanging is the best thing to do. Relax and imagine that your the shoulders have been pulled out of the sockets. And that'll just help everything get a good stretch out. It's going to chest out your stretch out your chest, your shoulders, your upper back. Thank you very much. Hopefully you enjoyed mobility over full 89. And uh, keep working on it. Okay, it's very important, especially if you are doing a lot of the kettlebell stuff, or especially if you can't get your arms straight above your head.
by fixing that range of movement, you're going to fix your posture and your form, etc. as well. Okay, you're going to hold yourself a lot better naturally. Thank you very much. Have a good day, and I'll see you tonight.